Welcome to the Binger. Once upon a time, Disney established an animation empire. With so many beloved classics to choose from, Disney decided its audiences would want to spend more time with its characters. And this led to the Disney direct video boom. The Mouse House created lower budget sequels, prequels, and midquels to some of its most popular titles. None of them were necessary, but some were certainly better than others, and some were definitely weirder than others. Here, we're ranking Disney's straight to DVD movies from ho hum to just plain weird. Belle's Magical World. Belle's Magical World was originally released in 1998. The movie featured three shorts that were meant to be episodes of an unaired Beauty and the Beast TV show. And if you get a load of these shorts, you won't be surprised that the show never saw the light of day. The story takes place during 1991's Beauty and the Beast, when Belle and the Beast are still getting to know one another. And it just makes you question why Belle ever fell in love with the Beast, since he is constantly angry. Plus, the animation looks terrible. And despite all that, Disney released a special edition version of the film with an additional 22 minute episode. Woohoo! Tarzan 2. Tarzan 2 explores Tarzan's experiences as a human child raised by apes. Tarzan isn't physically capable of doing everything a gorilla can, and that realization makes him seriously question his worth. Like many a Disney movie though, Tarzan ultimately comes to understand that he has unique strengths of his own. You can do it, Nikki! He can make tools, tricks, and traps that help him accomplish things that the other gorillas couldn't dream of. The story is trite, but it's entertaining enough. At least the animation isn't too bad, and the movie features new songs by Phil Collins, so that's something. The Return of Jafar The Return of Jafar from 1994 is the direct-to-video sequel that started it all. As Disney's first foray into the format, The Mouse House put a lot of marketing muscle behind this movie. It was also an important experiment for the company because it was the follow-up to the popular 1992 version of Aladdin. Disney suspected its fans would be interested and it wasn't disappointed. Unlike some of the movies on this list, at least this one had real stakes. As the title promises, Jafar, Agrabah's chief vizier turned genie, returns when someone rubs his lamp. Rub my lamp! Whoa. The story isn't bad. But without Robin Williams returning to reprise his role as the genie, it also isn't that interesting. Beauty and the Beast The Enchanted Christmas This is the first Beauty and the Beast directed DVD sequel. Like Belle's magical world before it, the movie takes place during the time when Beast is holding Belle captive in his castle. The plot centers on Belle's desire to celebrate Christmas and Beast's hatred of the holiday. Throughout the film, Beast is mad and Belle is charming and we're once again left to wonder how these two ever made it work. There's also an evil organ named Forte who tries to prevent the pair from falling in love because he doesn't want to be human again. While it certainly made Christmas loving kids happy, it doesn't hold a candle to the original film. Tarzan and Jane Tarzan and Jane is a 2002 sequel of 1999's Tarzan. It uses a framing device to present three episodes of the film's tie-in TV show, The Legend of Tarzan, that never made it to air. The story sees Jane trying to do something nice for Tarzan for their anniversary. Yet each time she has an idea, like throwing him a party or getting him a fancy gift, she's reminded of a similar attempt that failed. Fortunately, in the end, Tarzan comes through for Jane and they get to celebrate their anniversary in style after all. The movie is honestly kind of cute, but the animation is only fair and many of the secondary characters are just plain annoying. Lady and the Tramp 2 Scamp's Adventure Disney's initial venture into direct-to-video movies rested on follow-ups to its newest releases. That is, until it decided to dig a little deeper into its archives with the 2001 sequel to 1955's Lady and the Tramp. The movie focuses on Scamp, the son of the original Star-Crossed Dogs, and it's basically a rehash of the first movie, except this time Scamp is the well-kept dog and he meets a stray named Angel. An angel. An angel? It even includes a repeat of the spaghetti scene, but unfortunately Scamp and Angel lack the charm that Lady and Tramp have. Plus, Scamp's desire to leave the love and care of his family is all because he wants to be cool. It's pretty shallow, Scamp. It's pretty shallow. Aladdin and the King of Thieves 
Aladdin and the King of Thieves was the third in the Aladdin trilogy and one of the best direct video movies Disney's ever made. It actually fills in Aladdin's backstory by having him reconnect with his criminal father, Kasim. Aladdin grapples with the conflicts between who his father is and who he is about to become when he marries Jasmine. This makes for some interesting character development and real emotional weight. It also continues Iago's story. Now that he's on Aladdin's side, he's realizing that palace life it's kind of boring. Adding to the mix is Robin Williams' triumphant return as the voice of the genie. Oh yeah! The movie actually ties the story of Aladdin up by the time it ends, and Disney wisely never made another sequel. The Lion King 2, Simba's Pride. Another great Disney directed DVD entry is this sequel to 1994's The Lion King. The original film set an extremely high bar, and this sequel manages to mostly live up to it. It focuses on Simba and Nala's daughter, Kiara, as she meets and falls in love with Kovu, a follower of Scar. It's all very Romeo and Juliet-esque. While the movie features an oddly prejudiced Simba, he does come around in the end. All in all, Simba's pride is pretty compelling. The Little Mermaid 2, Return to the Sea. Yet another sequel that checks in with its original character's offspring is the second Little Mermaid film. This time, Ariel and Eric's daughter Melody pulls a reverse Ariel when she decides that she wants to return to the sea. Ursula's twin sister even makes an appearance to make a deal with Melody to turn her into a mermaid. While the film is mostly a rehash of the first movie, Melody is an interesting character. Not to mention the movie makes it fun to catch up with characters from the original movie, like Flounder, who is now a beer belly sporting dad. Pocahontas 2, Journey to a New World. This is where things start to get a little weird with Disney's straight-to-video movies. A sequel to the historically inaccurate Pocahontas sounds ill-advised at best, and this movie does manage to live up to that expectation. At least the story is slightly more historically accurate this time. It sees Pocahontas travel to England ask the king to stop hunting Native Americans. Yet, the real focus on the film is a love triangle between Pocahontas, John Rolfe, and John Smith. It falls all over itself trying to get Pocahontas together with Rolfe, but it just doesn't make for an involving plot. Not only does it force Pocahontas to adapt to English customs, it doesn't let her fight for herself like she did in the first movie. Lilo and Stitch 2 – Stitch has a glitch Stitch as a Glitch is the second sequel to Lilo and Stitch, but unlike 2003's Stitch, the movie, which we'll get to here in a second, this 2005 sequel isn't setting up a TV show. It's a true sequel with a self-contained story that focuses on Lilo and Stitch's family and life in Hawaii. Lilo wants to compete in a hula competition to honor her late mother, but Stitch, as the title promises, starts to malfunction. His glitch may ruin Lilo's plans. The movie maintains the offbeat essence of the original and nicely balances the human with the alien. While it does get a little cloying and contrived at times, overall it's a fun continuation of the original film. Cinderella 2 – Dreams Come True this sequel to 1950's Cinderella was another multiple segment movie with three episodes focusing on different characters. Only one centered on Cinderella. There can be only one. The other two were stories about Jacques the Mouse and the evil stepsister Anastasia. While the original Cinderella is a classic, this movie doesn't add anything to that legacy. The stakes in this movie are considerably lower than those in the first film. Cinderella frets about her prowess as a princess. Jacques spends the day as a human and learns to accept his true mouse form. And Anastasia falls in love with a lowly baker. The movie isn't particularly gripping. Unlike some of the other straight-to-video movies, though, this at least employs a decent framing device to make the thing work as a whole. What it is is the mice are reminiscing the three featured segments as they put together a storybook. Hunchback of Notre Dame 2 this next group of films is an odd bunch, not because of their stories, but because of the decision to sequelize them is a head-scratcher. First up is the second Hunchback of Notre Dame. The first movie was all about Quasimodo learning to accept himself. By the end, he understood that it was what was on the inside that made him beautiful. This movie undoes all that growth by introducing him to a new love interest, Madeline. Her problem is the exact opposite of Quasi's. She's judged for being just too darn pretty. Yet she runs away the first time she catches a glimpse of Quasimodo, making her a hard character to get behind. The film has flat characters, uninspired songs, and seriously subpar animation. Fox and the Hound 2 
If there was every movie that wasn't ripe for a sequel, it's 1981's The Fox and the Hound. The original was a beautifully heartbreaking film with a definitive ending. Yet for some reason, Disney decided that it would create this mid-cool that takes place when Todd and Copper are still young pups. In it, Todd and Copper meet a band of country singing dogs, and Copper abandons his friendship with Todd to join them. The pair eventually reconcile, and it's all very cute and cuddly, but it is in complete contrast to the original movie. Especially since we know that in the film, the friendship between Todd and Copper eventually breaks up anyway, and from much sadder reasons. Bambi 2 Another movie that seems like a strange choice for a sequel is Bambi. Everyone remembers the original movie for the part where Bambi tragically loses his mom. This midquel exists to show what happened between that loss and Bambi's adolescence. While Bambi didn't know his dad before his mom perished, it seems Bambi's father, the great prince, took it upon himself to raise the little deer. The movie focuses on Bambi and his father's attempts to bond, and actually has some pretty touching moments. But of course, it also has a contrived conflict with a deer named Rano that takes away from all of that heartwarming father-son action. Still, with Patrick Stewart voicing the Great Prince, this one is actually worth a watch. Shut up, Wesley. Kronk's New Groove one of the highlights of 2000's The Emperor's New Groove was the henchman Kronk, a daffy but well-meaning dimwit. His popularity must have made the idea of a direct-to-video sequel focusing on his character seem like a great idea. Unfortunately, this was a serious miscalculation. Kronk made for a great supporting character in the original film, but the character doesn't shine the same way as the star of Kronk's new groove. He wasn't built to sustain his own film. In this sequel, he's saddled with plot lines that include a bid to win his father's approval and a romance with a fellow camp counselor. Even Patrick Warburton, who reprised his role as the character, couldn't save this odd misfire. The Little Mermaid, Ariel's Beginning This 2008 prequel to The Little Mermaid ended Disney's run of direct-to-DVD follow-up films. And what a way to go out. This movie made the unusual decision to have its plot rest on the absence of one of the things that made the original great. Its music. In Ariel's beginning, it's revealed that King Triton blamed music for the death of his wife, and so he banned music from his kingdom, a plot point that banishes music from the movie too, making for a far less captivating film. Just as she wanted legs in the first movie, this younger version of Ariel just wants music to be part of her world. The story is pretty thin though. On top of that, some of the characters seem completely different from the ones that we know. That's especially true of Flounder, Ariel's cowardly best friend who, in this film, is an underground music club going outlaw. Stitch the Movie This 2003 sequel to Lilo and Stitch wasn't so much a standalone follow-up as a setup for a Lilo and Stitch TV show. It isn't bad for what it is, and it includes all of the characters fans met in the original movie and further develops the relationship between Stitch and Lilo. Plus, it has that same off-kilter charm. It also introduces the strange rabbit-like evil scientist, Dr. Hamsterville, who comes across as a lost character from Pinky and the Brain. The plot is a bit of a cliffhanger. It sets up the TV show by introducing the conceit that Lilo and Stitch will find homes for the other experiments that preceded Stitch. Yet the movie's story doesn't suffer too much because of this. Overall, it's weird, but diverting. Number 19, 101 Dalmatians 2, Patches London Adventure. This peculiar sequel to 1961's 101 Dalmatians focuses on Patch, one of Pongo and Perdita's many puppies. Patch feels overlooked in his large family. Understandably so, I mean, you're competing with a hundred other dogs for attention. And it turns out Patch's fears aren't totally unfounded. When the family moves, they leave little Patch behind. Instead of panicking though, Patch decides to go audition for a TV show featuring his doggy hero, Thunderbolt. Oh, and yeah, of course, Cruella de Vil is back. She's taken up with a French artist who she hopes will help her get over her obsession with Dalmatians. Instead, she somehow becomes even more fixated than ever and clashes with the dogs once more. It's not the most well-executed movie, but it sure is nutty. Mulan 2 This inexplicable sequel to Mulan bears little resemblance to the original movie. Mulan is suddenly a romantic, Captain Shang is running away from woodland creatures, and Mushu well, he just turns evil. Yeah, 
the formerly loyal Mushu decides to break up Shang and Mulan because he doesn't want to lose his job as Mulan's guardian. There's also a lackluster story that sees Mulan and Shang escort the Emperor's daughters to another kingdom for arranged marriages. Guys, there's a reason this one has a 0% on Rotten Tomatoes. It's not good. Leroy and Stitch like Stitch the movie, Leroy and Stitch has everything to do with the Lilo and Stitch TV show. After three seasons of finding the Stitch experiments, this movie served as a wrap-up to the series. This time, the bad guy, Dr. Hamsterview, creates a rival for Stitch that he names Leroy. He looks just like Stitch, except that he's red. Dr. Hamsterview wants to use Leroy to take over the world and ends up creating a whole army of the things to make his dream come true. It turns out, though, that the Leroys have an off switch. This leads to Stitch singing Elvis songs to foil the little red aliens. The movie is unusual, and it's unnecessary, but if Lilo and Stitch is your thing, it's still a pretty entertaining story. Cinderella 3 – A Twist in Time this charmingly wacky threequel to the 1950 Disney classic Cinderella comes completely out of left field. It involves time travel and pretty much rewrites the events of Cinderella while completely ignoring Cinderella 2. Yet somehow, it kind of works. After Cinderella's stepsister discovers the fairy godmother's wand, Lady Tremaine uses it to return to the day of the glass slipper fitting. She changes the shoe so that this time it fits Anastasia's foot and alters the prince's memory so that he recognizes Anastasia as the girl he wants to marry. The film features a proactive, courageous Cinderella and gives the former ugly stepsister Anastasia a fully fleshed out redemption arc. It's an unexpected delight. The Lion King, one and a half. Sitting at number one on our list to straight to DVD sequels is the weirdest movie of all, The Lion King, one and a half. The film retells the story of The Lion King, but from Timon and Pumbaa's point of view. It's a little bit Rosencrantz and Guildenstern, and a little bit Mystery Science Theater 3000 as the pair watch and comment on the film. We also get some of Timon's backstory from before he met Pumbaa, and learn about the time that Timon and Pumbaa spent raising Simba. This movie definitely stands out as one of the most bizarre and unique entries in Disney's direct-to-video collection. It's kooky. It's comedic. Yeah, sure, maybe it relies a little too heavily on fart chokes, but what did you expect to happen when you spend a whole flick with Timon and Pumbaa? None of these direct-to-video DVDs were a necessity. But for kids who just wanted more of their favorite story, they were gold. Do you remember any of these movies fondly? Or was there one that especially made you scratch your head? Tell us all about it in the comments section down below. There's always more content coming from us here at The Binger, so like this video and subscribe to the channel for more content just like this. Thanks for watching.